In South America, many exciting events have recently taken place. The two events that touch the right tones for me, first of all, the start of hopefully a long-lasting peace in Colombia. The second, the Olympics in Brazil. As a former sportsman, it's great to watch athletes competing and working together to reach the best result. Less known to the world, but known to US compliance-driven companies, is that the Brazilian Ministry of Environment has published plans to establish a national chemicals register. It takes two to tango, so industry as a key stakeholder will be involved. Today we discuss the intentions and impact of the draft legislation with Alberto da Roja Neto of the Ministry of Environment of Brazil and Michael Wenk, who recently joined Bergeson and Campbell and the actor group from industry. But before we start, also for Alberto and Michael, the question, what did you do in 1996? In 1996, I was studying to get into the university to study biology. 1996, I was finishing university and, and being very scared about what I would do with the rest of my life. Talking about dates, in 1992 in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil, the United Nations organized a conference on environment and development. In the follow-up, during Johannesburg summit in 2002, it was decided that countries should develop, by 2020, chemicals management systems. Subsequently, in 2006, in Dubai, during the first International Conference on Chemicals Management, the strategic approach to international chemicals management, SICOM, was laid out. Part of SICOM recommends actions to be undertaken by countries for a policy framework to foster the sound management of chemicals. And that is what currently is happening in Brazil. Alberto, can you share a little bit about the Brazilian developments with us? Since uh, two years ago, we started looking for some experience, some legislations, some regulations in other countries and in other regions, and start to develop this, this legislation. We established a working group on the National Commission on Chemical Safety, and with a multi-sectorial um, stakeholders from the industry, the NGOs, and different sectors in the government. The, the main principles are uh, to not to reinvent the wheel, to use all the available information. Okay, Michael, do you see similar developments in other South American countries? In terms of the regulation? Yeah. Uh, we're seeing a lot of development in terms of chemical regulation in South America just in general. So, for example, in Brazil with food contact legislation and, and biocide legislation. But a lot of other countries especially are considering adopting GHS and very specific standards for their region. So, for example, agricultural laws that maybe didn't exist before. So, yes. But in Brazil, you're setting up a national register now also for chemicals and substances? This is the main uh, topic of the legislation that established the national register. And it's for a three years period, all the, in, uh, the produced or imported chemicals, uh, companies ab uh, above one ton, needs to uh, input the, the, uh, the information on, on, the, on the register. Michael, are there any other South American countries that have inventories already in place or are aiming to make something like that? Not in the way that you're probably thinking. A lot of the countries tend to regulate what they call loosely in the regulations hazardous substances or hazardous materials, but not an inventory per se the way Brazil is looking. Alberto, you just mentioned that um, when you were developing the system uh, at the ministry, you were looking at other countries as well. Uh, which countries inspired you for new chemicals legislation? We had a study, on the, a more in-deep study on the legislation on China and EU and uh, Canada. You liked the Canadian system best, at least for the Brazilian model. Uh, can you tell us a little bit what you liked so much about that system? It's about the, the way the, 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 the Canadian uh, make the control and, and try to, to have this scheme of cooperation between industry and the government and also in a, a risk-based approach and not too much a hazard-based approach. Do you already know a little bit how the final law would look like uh, based on the CBI part? I can say that we receive uh, some points about this on our public consultation and uh, I think we didn't discuss sufficiently. We have established uh, a, a committee, a technical committee, to, to evaluate the, the, the substance. And, and it's included uh, the industry, the Ministry of Industry and the Ministry of Labor. Coming from a U.S. perspective where there's, it's a much more litigious or litigated society, we have to protect our confidential business information very closely. So our concern, of course, is when it goes to another jurisdiction, 
are we losing something as part of the notification process? So at least for the U.S. side, that's a big concern. Another article in the regulation sets out uh, that uh, there are criteria for flagging chemicals for further review. Uh, this, of course, is not new. Eh? You see that happening all over the world. Do you take what happens all over the world into account? We are going to, to, to use, as I, uh, I am saying, the, the available information, uh, hazard assessment and uh, risk assessment. We, th that's our uh, thought. And we are going to to try to establish some cooperation, some uh, regulatory cooperation. One of the things I was really impressed with as part of the development process in Brazil for the regulation as I was following it is how cooperative it was, how, how the authority brought together the SMEs, the trade associations, the industry groups, and had a what seemed like a very positive discussion in developing this regulation. How were you able to do that? Because from an outside standpoint, it looks like it was done so easily and so well. How did you get everyone together to have their voice heard and come up with a, a solid regulation? I can say that we divide the problem in two. Firstly, we work uh, mainly with the Brazilian Industrial Chemical Association. So it was, uh, I can see, easier to have a common agreement with, uh, firstly with, with them. But we receive a lot of um, comments on the on the draft legislation we are going to look at uh, some specific points uh, raised by different sectors to to try to have a agreement at the beginning of the next year we expect it to to conclude and and to send it to the to the congress is new testing also potentially a requirement we are really looking forward to use all the available information and and try to, to avoid the, 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 the need of new tests. Will there be a uh, kind of IT system for people to register in? For sure. We are uh, developing this system, but we have to finish our, uh, at the beginning the draft legislation to, to start this process. Thank you for these concluding remarks, uh, showing once more it takes two to tango and we all have to follow the tune and dance.